It's important when you ride long distance, particularly if you're increasing your miles, you may need to stop and just give your saddle area a break every 30 minutes or just get off of the, the saddle. I usually, which is why I like hills, like when I descend, I'll get off the saddle just to give my um, bottom a break. Other than that, I usually ride on the saddle. I don't, when I climb or anything like that, I don't get off the saddle. But when I descend, I usually get off the saddle just, just to give my bottom a break, particularly with longer distance rides. Welcome to Running is Cheaper Than Therapy podcast. I am your host, Dr. Weta L. Brown. I inspire and promote movement. I explain how running adds to life from a mental wholeness aspect. How obstacles can be overcome in life to make it to your finish line. Welcome to Running is Cheaper Than Therapy, episode 37. Today, I'm going to talk about a sore subject, literally. Today, the discussion may be a little X-rated. So just to warn you, you may be a little bit freaked out, for lack of a better word. This may be TMI. I'm going to talk about a very common cycling injury or concern, I would more call it. So if... You're a cyclist, are interested in cycling, or triathlons because cycling is a part of the three sports. You may want to listen. I pray this topic does not scare you off. My concern is knowledge because knowledge is power. But again, this may be TMI. I'm not modest since I've been doing endurance sports. I've kind of thrown modesty out of the window. For example, endurance running. When you're running, particularly on a trail or out in the middle of nowhere, sometimes you have to go to the bathroom. So you adjust, if you know what I mean. Also, my first Ironman race. I talked to seasoned Ironman triathletes, and they often talked about not stopping to go to the bathroom. And I mean number one, not number two, because I pray that I would never have to do a number two in an Ironman race. And there are ways to get around it, taking a modium, but practice this during training, not during a race. It's a lot of things we do as triathletes that may be considered a little bit extreme. But I often heard many athletes don't stop again to go to the bathroom because that's time in an Ironman is a time to race. So they pee on the bike. I said I would never do that. But you heard it here, recorded, that during Ironman Louisville, I did it. So again, modesty is out the window. So what I'm going to talk about today is called saddle sores. And I'm not talking about a horse in a saddle. I'm talking about an injury or a concern that some cyclists get. The seat of a bike is called a saddle. And if you ride for a long period of time, you have an intimate relationship with the saddle and what's between your legs. So oftentimes people get what's called saddle sores, little bumps. They can be the size of a pimple. They can progress to a massive abscess, which we'll go into a little bit later. They're thought to be related to follicles, hair follicles. So it's thought that an ingrown hair can cause inflammation. um, And you get inflammation because as you're riding, you get friction. And the friction, the inflammation can result in what, again, is called a saddle sore. And I personally can attest to the fact that this are one of the most frustrating and uncomfortable ailments that you can get as a cyclist or a triathlete. They happen to most riders. Although, interesting, I was talking to a friend actually today 
who had a knee issue, I was mentioning my issue with saddle sores and she's never had one. And I said, God bless you. And I was talking to a triathlete coach. She personally hasn't had any ever and she's been racing for some time. So God bless her too. But I've had numerous ones. The one I have presently and the one I had last year around my birthday, I'll never forget that experience, were the worst. The one I had in August of 2020, along with the rest of the year, was the worst ever. So again, what are saddle sores? So last year, when I first, actually no, 2019, when I first had saddle sores, and they were so minor compared to what I've experienced since then. I called a dermatologist. One of my friends who is also a cyclist recommended this dermatologist. So I called and I made an appointment with the receptionist and I told her what was wrong. And she had no clue what I was talking about. But she made my appointment and the doctor explained that saddle sores can be divided into two main types. Those caused solely due to excessive friction. Again, the friction between the saddle, the bike seat, and the skin in your intimate parts. That friction causes excessive chafing. And then there are those, as mentioned before, when I was talking about hair follicles. The most simple type of saddle sore is the one caused by abrasions of the skin due to excessive friction. This can be caused by a number of reasons. You could have an improper bike fit. Cycling is so technical and had no clue before I started seriously cycling. But after you get a road bike, it's best to get a professional fit. So um, they can adjust your seat height, your handlebar. They adjust the seat height and, and far and the seat front to back. All those things are very important when it comes to cycling. One time I went to a um, vacation cycling trip and I had someone put my bike back together and I marked it on the tape where the height was supposed to be. But for some reason it was off. So it was off maybe like a few millimeters. And about 20 or 30 miles into the ride, my back started hurting so bad. And I never had back problems cycling before. And someone noticed like your, your seat height is wrong. So they just adjusted on the fly and it improved. And when I got home, I took it to my bike fitter and she told me it was off. I guess the tape moved. So those small little things can really significantly impact you. Also, another reason for excessive friction could be the wrong saddle. There are so many different types of saddles and nine out of 10 people I talk to never go with the saddle that comes with the bike. That's a part of fit too. I tried four or five saddles initially and she had testers so I can go ride. Because sometimes you don't know until after you put some miles in. And then after we decided on one, then she ordered one. And that was my final saddle. So if you're into cycling, it's best to find a good bike fitter. And one where you can go back multiple times because a lot of it's kind of trial and error. So the abrasion type of saddle sore presents as raw marks on the skin. If they develop further, the skin can break and cause a crater-like appearance. Season three, we will continue the new segment called Ask the Dub. If you have any questions related to musculoskeletal injuries or musculoskeletal health, go to my website, www.weouilife.com, click on the tab Voicemail, leave your voicemail, and select Messages will be aired and answered on the segment. Now, back to the show. The hair follicle type of saddle sore also results from excessive friction. Our skin normally has what's called a staph. And staph is a bacteria. It's a common bacteria that lives on the skin. The excessive friction around the hair follicle causes breaks in the skin, and this can cause an infection. The infection can result in a small cyst. Again, it looks like a pimple, as I mentioned before. This pimple can result in a small cyst. Take out that. 
And this pimple can increase in size to an abscess that needs a formal, what's called an IND, which is an incision and debridement. So basically, in order to get the infection or the inflammation out, it requires a medical profession to take a scalpel or a knife and make a small incision to get all the infection out. Let's talk about how to prevent saddle sores. Again, I talked about proper saddles. A bike fit is of utmost importance. And also, like I talked about my experience with my bike fitter when I got my road bike, when I got a tri bike. Tri bikes are a little bit different because you're sitting a little bit forward, so the pressure points are a little bit different um, than on a road bike. And the saddles are usually different. So I tried maybe five or six saddles. It was so difficult for me to get a proper fit for my tri bike. I even tried the saddle that I have on my road bike, but it didn't quite work on the tri bike because again, it's different pressure points. So I tried and experimented and I had no luck and I was so frustrated, but I went to another bike shop. I had another issue and I needed to go to a shop for something else in the owner recommended zip ties because the way my saddle is made, I wish I could show you a picture. It looks like two prongs in the front and the way they were separated caused a lot of pressure. So he put zip ties to bring those two look like prongs together and that made the difference. Zip ties. And so I have that same saddle and the same zip ties <laughs> since that day. So thank you, Troy. Other prevention tips. As soon as you finish cycling, take off your biking shorts or your tri shorts. If you're not at an area where you can immediately shower or take a bath, take wipes with you. Put on some different shorts. Also, it's important the cycling shorts that you choose, all of them are not created equally or um, triathlon shorts. Usually the difference between triathlon shorts and cycling shorts is the padding. There's usually more padding on cycling shorts but know that just because you have extra padding does not mean that it's better so it may benefit you particularly if you're new in cycling to try a different brands and to see how you like them because again all padding is not created equally and actually sometimes my tri shorts are more comfortable riding than my cycling shorts there's no certain brand that i usually gravitate to but some cyclists have a brand of kits and the kits are the top and bottom are one piece that cyclists use so it's important again the shorts matter too i was mentioning to one of my friends who's a cyclist that i had a saddle star and i haven't been able to ride and he mentioned riding two riding with two shorts i wouldn't recommend that because more padding is not always better in order to prevent or to heal a saddle source to get back to your normal riding routine. And don't wear underwear when you cycle. Very important. Also, avoid increasing mileage too soon. Don't go from riding five miles to riding 50, say in a week. I'm guilty of increasing my cycling mileage, and that may be my issue this time. Also, there's different types of creams that you can apply in order to prevent the friction. There are several brands, and actually Dr. Honeybutt brand is was made by a, a member of our Major Taylor Cycling Club of Chicago, which I would recommend. You can get that online. I'll put a link in the show notes. Also, it's important when you ride long distance, particularly if you're increasing your miles, you may need to stop and just give your saddle area a break every 30 minutes or just get off of the, the saddle. I usually, which is why I like heels. Like when I descend, I'll get off the saddle just to give my um, bottom a break. Other than that, I usually ride on the saddle. I don't, when I climb or anything like that, I don't get off the saddle. But when I descend, I usually get off the saddle just, just to give my bottom a break, particularly with longer distance rides. Other things that may help in the prevention is, some of this is controversial as far as hair or no hair. So there's not a consensus again. And regarding hair, some people shave, some people wax, some people use a laser in order to get rid of hair. Some people don't shave, wax, or laser. They just have hair. Some people 
avoid anything that gets rid of hair. Waxing again, laser, shaving, creams, because they say it irritates the follicles and allows bacteria into these follicles. Depending on your skin type, particularly people of color can have um, a history or a problem with ingrowns. I know I have in the past. Ingrown hairs can start as a small problem and progress into saddle sore. That was ha- happened when I had my worst ever saddle sore. And there's also a theory that hair provides a buffer to absorb some of the friction that can be uh, transferred to the skin. So options with hair, go free, just let your hair grow, shave, creams, waxing, laser, hair or no hair. There is still controversy around that topic. So how to treat saddle sores. If you develop an abrasion assist, treat it. A&D ointment, diaper rash ointment helps. My dermatologist also recommended acne medication for pimple side sores without open skin. Some use Noxema tea tree oil. I try to visit my dermatologist early when I get one and he injects the area with cortisone. This usually resolves it if I go early enough and that is the key. And also time off of the saddle, which for me has been the hardest part. I also use this prescription Lida Derm gel. It numbs the air when I couldn't rest right, right before my Iron Man race. But the best, again, advice is to get some rest if you can. Make sure you thoroughly clean the area. So again, as soon as you finish riding, shower or take a bath. Um, and if you're out, because so oftentimes we ride maybe two or three hours away, take an extra pair of shorts, take some wipes with you. Change those shorts and use those wipes and, and that may help. Six baths and warm compression can help with the pain. If sores are severe and don't get better, stop cycling. I know it, it, it's hard to do. It hurts. I love cycling so much. But a pimple can turn into an abscess and you don't want that to happen. You really don't. So let me tell you about my experience with saddle sores. I've been cycling since 2017. And I remember initially maybe having some bumps, like a pimple size, but they went away. So I didn't really pay attention to them. I started talking to other people. I'm like, what is that? And they explained creams. I had no idea what the creams were. And then I had some friends telling me about sores they got and the experience they have. I have one friend who's had several massive saddle sores. She had like crater size sores, abscess. She's the one that recommended a dermatologist. I like that dermatologist. He moved away. That was my first couple in 2019, right before Ironman. You do a lot of excessive mileage because the longest part, the bike ride in an Ironman is 112 miles. So there's a lot of biking in order to train for that distance. Got my first bad one after we did a um, training trip to Louisville to practice the course because I was training for um, Ironman Louisville. So I saw the dermatologist that my friend recommended i had i think three sores it was small one was the very major problematic one he injected two of them another one he said just stay off of it Mm, i believe he told me to wait about a week so i just missed i missed two days of cycling but i still was able to get my long ride in that week so it wasn't major and i was able to complete my race and everything was fine with the world at the time this was 2019 2020 with covid I didn't do a lot of early season riding. Sometimes we take a trip. We usually start riding in Chicago around late April, May. So we weren't having good rides due to social distance and COVID. So when we started, I was so excited to ride. So maybe I increased my mileage too soon. But I remember, this is my birthday weekend. I had a small saddle sore, but it was painful. I can I could feel it riding, but I didn't stop. And... The ride schedule for my birthday weekend, August 8th, 2020, was 75 miles. So I wanted to do 100 miles on my birthday. I'm crazy. So I rode with my group and we got a little lost. So I wound up doing maybe 77 miles. And it hurt from the first pedal stroke. I should have just said, probably not a good idea for me to ride. But I said I'll be okay. So I 
packed. They have individual packages of the cream that you use. I packed a lot in my cycling top in the pockets. I kind of figured out how to ride with more pressure on one side of my cheek than the other side. So it really didn't aggravate me doing the ride and it was the best ride, even though it was hard, but it was the best ride. I felt strong, although I really didn't want to do this extra two or three miles that we did. <laughs> I felt strong, but at the end, when I was changing, I noticed I had a significant amount of swelling down there. And I was like, oh my goodness, what is this? So I went home and I slept because the plan was to do 75 miles with my tri group. And then a major tailor um, was doing this midnight bike ride. And it was supposed to be a slow, even pace. So I got up to go because even though I had swelling down, it really wasn't hurting. So I was like, I'm going to ride my 25 miles. I'm going to get my 100 miles in. So I went to go to the ride and my car was stolen. So I, I didn't have a ride and it was kind of late. So I tried to call people to get a ride, but it was too late because it was a little far where we were supposed to meet. So I missed that, which is probably a good thing because I shouldn't have rode 25. Five more miles. So the next day, the swelling was worse, but no pain. And I was dealing with the fact that my car was stolen, but I got it back. The next day, the police were in a neighborhood in Chicago and they were scanning plates and mine came up as stolen because I went to the police department the night of, it was about 10 o'clock at night, and filed a report. And I'm glad I did because it was in the system. So I got my car back, and but it wasn't in a position to drive because it smelled like gas. They had a generator in the back. I'm not sure what the people who stole my car had in mind. So I was carless. So I had to go around and get around a car and things like that. And it was my birthday. I went to one of my friend's house. We had a lake house and went kayaking, which lake water and an infection, is, which is what I had, um, are not things that mix very well. So the next day I was in so much pain, I could barely walk. I could barely move without hurting down below. And this was doing the issues that they had downtown with looting. So at night they had the bridges up and my hospital is downtown. So I actually was going to go to the emergency room that Monday evening, but I was scared I might not be able to make it because the bridges were up. So I just made it through the night. I don't know how I made it because I was hurting so bad. I went to the urgent care and they said I had an abscess and they don't, Drain them there. I remember when I was talking about the uh, IND or having to drain an abscess if you don't rest, which I didn't. Of course, I wrote 75 miles. A sore can turn into an abscess. So that is what I had. So I went to Dr. Day recommended we get me in the same day, um, but I couldn't rest and I could barely walk. I was walking like an old woman because any friction, any pressure caused pain. So basically, I had to walk with my legs basically wide open which was like walking like an older woman in pain, which is, I guess, what I was. Anyway, so I went to the OBGYN that they recommended. She gave me numbing medicine, but it didn't work very well. Maybe it helped on the skin. This was the one of the most painful experiences I've had in my entire life. So she used a scalpel, made an incision, and she got a Q-tip. It stuck in the ear to make sure there were no deep pockets to make sure she got all the infection out. Um, I was screaming. Someone heard me down the hall and came and, and called herself consoling me. So, and I kept apologizing, but doctor kept saying, I deliver babies. So I'm used to hearing screaming. <laughs> so it wasn't that bad. But after it was over, even though I hurt, like, like I said, one of the most painful things I've ever experienced in my entire life, it helped to get some of the pressure after she got some infection out of there. And then she, um, Gave me antibiotics and I had to do sit baths and I couldn't cycle for like six weeks. She told me like two weeks, but after the infection healed, the swelling went down and my bottom looked normal. I had a incision that was tender, so it hurt to ride because I kept testing it on my trainer and a trainer, if you don't know, it's like you, it depends on the type of trainer. You take your wheel off and then you, um, mount your bike on the trainer or some of them you keep your wheel on but it basically allows you to ride indoors so i got on my trainer to test things out before i tried to ride outside again so it was about six weeks before i could ride and i was out of shape and it was sort of in the season it rides fast so i really didn't go back to our usual morning rides i kind of ride on my own and with my track group and on this trainer 
And there were really no races because of COVID. So I got motivated to get better in cycling 2020 because I couldn't really race. That was my motivation. Actually, Justin Williams, who talked to our cycling club during the pandemic virtually, gave me that um, motivation and it helped my spirit because I love cycling so much. In retrospect, things that I should have done. One is I should have seen someone sooner. I shouldn't have waited until... I was basically had a full-blown abscess before I tried to seek medical treatment. I should go at any initial signs of a pimple or small irritation. I know now. I guess I do. I shouldn't have increased my mileage. I shouldn't, although I wanted to have an epic ride my birthday weekend. Maybe I shouldn't have rode 75 miles. And I wasn't trained for anything. I just love cycling. So those were mistakes from last year. So this year, 2021, I got to settle sore about a month ago very small i uh, continue to cycle because i'm training for half iron man and iron man although i'm not sure if due to my knee injury which my knee is is, is great for those of you who listen and know me i had knee surgery at the end of 2020 rehab is good but to go from nothing to go back to running long distance is a process so my knees bother me and also have some shoulder issues Again, I went from nothing to riding longer distance on my tri bike and my shoulder got irritated. I have a partial thickness rotator cuff tear, which I've had for years, but it aggravates me from time to time. But that shoulder injury caused issues with riding on my aero bike or my tri bike and swimming. So my training hasn't been consistent due to a lot of injuries. So I'm not sure if I'm going to make those races. I'm okay with it. But my go to or my happy. My happy place is cycling. I love running too, but I haven't been able to run really, like run, run. So cycling has been my like saving grace for, just because I love it and I like the social interaction with my cycling friends and my triathlon friends. So I didn't stop cycling and it got worse. Two weeks ago, I was on the train because it rained and I didn't make the group ride. And I was supposed to do an hour and a half, but I did an hour because my saddle sore started bothering me. So I was like, let me go see someone. So I went to another dermatologist, getting that same friend, recommending someone else because the old dermatologist I used moved to be on faculty at another institution in another state. So they got me in right away. They gave me an injection and I thought, not the couple of days I should be able to cycle again, but it's still bothering me two weeks later. So I called back and they're like, we don't recommend another injection because too many injections can cause what's called atrophy, which is kind of a shrinking or a, the muscle mass gets small so it can look disfigured down there. So I'm supposed to go back this week. And if I don't like what I hear, I got an appointment with another dermatologist because I can't honestly be this long without cycling because it's about to drive me crazy. So it's better, but I'm just scared. I don't want what happened in August to happen again. Because again, that was one of the most painful things I've experienced in my life. So I'm about to go crazy. This weekend, I was supposed to do this women's crit, which Criterium Races I talked about before. They have this program where they give you tips about racing. So my plan was to do just a 30 minute ride because it's a race, but I'm a little wary. I may go tomorrow because I haven't ridden in over two weeks and my A bike is damaged, which is another long story, which I won't get into. I don't have my A bike with my race wheel and I haven't ridden in a couple of weeks and I still have a sore. So we'll see if I make it tomorrow for my 30 minute race. But maybe I'll go and just get some pointers and not in my mind be okay with not actually doing well in the race. Also, another thing I forgot to mention after this whole experience with my abscess, um, we talked about bear and different um, hair removals. So in the past, I've been a. Um, I use creams because they usually cause the least irritation and the least incidence of ingrown hairs because I have had a history of those prior to. So I decided to do laser, which is the only form of, although it's really not permanent hair removal, um, really the only form of permanent hair removal is electrolysis, but due to the amount of hair in the bikini area, it's a lengthy process. So I opted to do um, laser. 
So laser basically gets rid of all your hair and you go back. Most people require five to six treatments and it depends on how much hair you have and the quality of your hair, whether it's thick, of course, which my hair is being African-American. So I started in September and I still go now, but the length of time that I go is increased. Also note that in order for laser to work, you need darker hair. Say if you have gray hair or blonde hair, it doesn't work because it, it looks for the, the, the difference in between the skin and the, the hair as far as the color. And make sure that you do research and go to a person that knows what they're doing. I had laser before and I got burned. So um, just make sure you do your research, particularly if you have darker skin. I opted to to go bigger and I still got a saddle sore. Between treatments, you still have some hair, although it's, it's baby 90% gone. So it could have been a hair that was growing in between treatments. So I'm not really sure why I got my last saddle sore. But I'm being good, although I'm about to go crazy because I can't cycle until the saddle sore heals. I will let you know if I make my races. It may look like 2022 will be my year of return to long distance triathlon races. So pray for me because I miss cycling so much. So if you have questions regarding saddle sores, if you had ex have experienced saddle sores and some of the complications related to saddle sores, share um, via social media or you can go to my website and get my contact information via email. Or also, um, there's a link where you can leave a voicemail on my website. I would love to hear from you. That wraps up this episode of Running is Cheaper Than Therapy podcast. Thank you for tuning in. If you already haven't, please download Running is Cheaper Than Therapy podcast on Apple, Spotify, or however you listen to your favorite podcast. If you have any questions, concerns, or possible show topics, please email Run It Is Cheaper Than Therapy, OLB, Omaha Love Brown. Again, that's Run It Is Cheaper Than Therapy, Omaha Love Brown at gmail.com. I also can be reached via Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Handle We Life. We love all you I life, all you I love. Thank you, and please tune in again.